Not again. Oh, whoops. <laughs> really not working again? No, I'm an asshole, that's why. The Hardy Construction. Oh, this sandwich is delicious. Welcome to the Hardy Construction. It's Hardy Construction. <laughs> oh, Hardy Construction at Tumblr.com, YouTube.com, with your host, Alex, and... Ja, ja, ja. And today's film is... Dead Alive or Brain Dead, depending. Dead Alive is a 1992 film directed by Peter Jackson, written by Stephen Sinclair. Well, a story um, and credit. Ah, okay. And Peter. Starring Timothy Baum, Di Diana Penalver, and Elizabeth Moody. Uh, the film is about a young man's mother is bitten by a sub Sumatran rat monkey. She gets sick and dies, at which time she comes back to life, killing and eating dogs, nurses, friends, and neighbors. Who wrote this? Is that what it says? That's cool. We're on IMDb. I like it. Very literal. Did you know that that, that whole uh, IMDb description is 80 pages long? Anyway, so, really? this film, one of the uh, uh, stal stalwart, is it stalwart? Is that the word? Whatever. One of, one of the mo best known cult horror films by the yeah, man, huh? Uh, no, I was saying, yeah, definitely. It's definitely one of the best fucking cult movies. Oh, I love by it. By genius auteur Peter Jackson, who, got, who came to give us a uh, Hellboy and Hellboy 2. Oh, no, no, wait. Hellboy? I'm kidding. That's the other guy. That's Guillermo del Toro. Oh, okay. But he gave us films like Bad Taste, The Lord of the Rings trilogy, The Hobbit. Oh, uh, The Hobbit. Oh, I'm uh, coming what's to that my other movie? Heavenly Creatures. What's that shitty movie with Marky Mark and his daughter dies? The the Boners or something like that? The Boners? Some, something about Bones. Oh, The Lovely Boners. That was a good movie. Oh, yeah, The I, Lovely I Boners. It. Okay. I didn't watch it. Starring Sorcy Ross and the I don't Irish like girl. depressing movies. King Kong. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Funny enough, uh, this film has a Sumatran rat monkey, and that island is in King Kong on the map, so that's pretty cool. Cool. So, uh, let's get into Dead or Alive. Uh, what's your first experience with this movie? Uh, I think I saw this when I was like thirteen or something with my friend. Like I remember I was in like middle school, so whenever the hell that was, and just fucking a. Probably seen it like a hundred times since then. I love this movie. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it probably around that age too. And remember when I told you I was a two? No, at that age too. Oh, okay. T O O. Yeah, that's pretty young. And, um, remember how I, I always said I would be scared of everything because I didn't mm -hmm. know, you know, I was such a chicken shit. I was like a Richard Pryor, like scared of everything. Mm -hmm. And um, uh. I saw. I remember renting this movie. I don't know why, because the poster is so cool. It's just this girl with her. She's stretching her lips apart. And there's a yeah, I have a T-shirt with that exact. Oh, do you? That's image cool. On it. And there's like a tiny, tiny little skull with eyeballs. And it's actually just, it's aping on one of the scenes in the film where baby bursts out of this woman's um, face. Yeah. And uh, or splits her head in half and comes out. And um, but I remember looking at it. I was like, wow, this is so cool. And I was like a really. I was on a huge movie kick. Like I, I was and actually. Skulls like have eyes too. That's like your thing that you hate, right? What's that? No, but the, this is like more, like more comical. To me, there was something about this film that felt. I heard it was grotesque and horrible. I don't know. It must have been like through the internet. I was reading it. I don't even yeah. know if it was internet back then. I'm not sure. No, they, I don't even think the internet existed. Back so then. I, I don't know how I knew about this film. I must have known through something. It had to be some sort of internet thing. But um, anyway. I remember watching it, but this is like the era of when you first see like really disgusting movies. Like I wanted to go see every film. I saw like a lot of like uh, demonic toys, like a lot of the Charles Brand movies, you know, those shitty like uh, Full Moon Pictures stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And even watching, let's say, um, uh, Faces of Death, which I ninety percent of that movie is phony. But I, I hate that. It's the one where people like die for real. Yeah, right? but it's but it's phony though. A lot of, a lot of it is fake. Like you could tell a lot of it's bullshit because it's like you see a guy get like a, an alligator will attack a guy and then all of a sudden it cuts away and then the, the alligator is just wrestling with something in the water. That's not even <laughs> like right. why would they need to edit the part between the guy getting bit by an alligator and then the alligator turning around? Like, isn't the whole point to see the guy actually get pulled in? Right. But, but I was so spooked by that kind of, like, death. Like, the idea of death scared me so much. Not that it doesn't anymore, but uh, the idea of it... that I, I, could, to I couldn't every night, folks. Still. And I, and I couldn't even have the tape in my apartment anymore. I couldn't have the VHS of, of um, um, Faces of Death. I just felt like it was evil. But that could have been, like, my old school, like, Catholic upbringing that had Even that in my mind. fucking Christian. <laughs> uh, funny I said Catholic. 
But anyway, seeing Dead Alive, I remember yeah. putting it on on my VHS and watching it and watch, and just kind of like cringing because I knew I was going to see something that was going to stick with me, like just all this gore and horror <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> You're like torturing yourself. Basically. I guess so. I know, and one of the things vividly I remember from this, uh, watching this VHS of this, they had a trailer for a movie called Kika on a K-I- K-I-K-A, and it was like okay. one of those European comedies. Right. And they actually, in the trailer of the movie, there's a guy, like, raping a woman who's tied up to a chair. And I was like, why is that? That sounds like quite a comedy. <laughs> I'm like, what the? F-? I was like, is this supposed to be, like, funny? Like, like the trailer literally shows a guy raping her in the chair, but in a comedic way. Like, bouncing back and forth like a cartoon. Really? And I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's pretty much. up, It didn't make any actually. sense. I was like, are they really trying to make rape like a comedy? That's the first and only time I've ever seen that happen. Besides, if it's a male rape, you know, they could laugh at that all the time. But like, as a woman, obviously, it's not funny. But anyway. So, <laughs> so you're that, all for jail rape. That's great. That like aside. Edward Norton in American History X. That oh, seems hilarious. It, it was funny because I saw that with one of my friends who was gay. And I could tell, like, across the room, he was probably like, man, this is the greatest love scene I've ever seen. <laughs> you're an asshole. <laughs> I'm like... Oh, you head? know what? This brings me to really quick. We'll get back oh, yeah, to go ahead, Dead go Alive. Ahead. But let me re- talk about this article I just saw, completely unrelated, but kind of related to what we just said. Mm-hmm. There is a go on Huffington Post and type in Joseph uh, Skiambra, ex gay porn star. He's saying that. This is a quote from him. Let me read this here. Um, claims that anal sex causes men to give birth to the devil via the anus. He goes on to claim that doing gay porn resulted in him having to have his sphincters almost stitched shut. <laughs> mm, wow. <laughs> what the hell kind of comments are these? Is he a born-again, like, Christian or something? I guess so. I mean, he's obviously a fucking nut job, whatever the hell he is. Like, Jesus Christ. Anyway, but, you that know, that like is way better crazy. than that. But, you wow. Know. <laughs> Peter Jackson needs to make a movie about that, getting your sphincter Oof. stitched shut. Oof. He probably shits out of his ears. All right, so I remember the first scene in this movie with this guy. Uh, uh, he was like from the zoo, the New Zealand zoology, something or other. Okay. Like, very old school safari. I didn't. Even, that's how dumb I was as a kid. I didn't even know that this film was set in a different time era. Like watching the movie now, I was like, oh yeah, it's in 1957. I only got that because the grave, uh, the tombstone of the mom. But anyway, right. so this guy is, uh, you know, running away with this Sumatran rat monkey, rat monkey inside of this, this little, you know, threadbare. It's kind of cute looking, you know. Uh, it moves funny though, right? Doesn't it? It's like a. It's like a claymation puppet. Yeah, it's like a I don't understand Henson. because they use claymation for a part that doesn't even need claymation. They could have just stuck a hand through the bar, but they even animated that. So whatever, that's cool. And uh, this guy is trying to run away with this this uh, cage, with his um, translator. And through, the key, through the split in the mountain that is in Return of the King. Oh, okay. And uh, really- they're trying to run away, and these uh, natives are attacking them. And um, eventually he gets bitten by the rat monkey, and they chop his hands off. And, of course, me seeing this, I was like, holy fuck. I mean, I should realize it wasn't real, but just the idea of it was grotesque enough that, oh, my God, this guy's getting his getting hand chopped off. and his, like, Yeah, if you can't handle that kind off. of shit, this is not the movie for you. Yeah, dude. starting out, I mean... It's, That's like nothing. It got so much worse. <laughs> it's still a pre- it's still a pretty horrendous movie. It really is like gro- gro- t- I mean, it's a great movie, but it, like it's the amazing. violence is really. It's like you horrible. know this movie now is like cartoon violence. I love it. Like mm-hmm. it's perfect level that it's like funny no matter how bad it is. It's funny always. Yeah. Oh, it's exactly it's so the like top. the vibe I love. And they have a the little like little um, little like flourishes and touches like the the doctor that hooks up the main character his name is Heinrich and he has like <laughs> he's like he, for no reason he's just like I, I, don't, I don't have my papers I don't Spitting have my out like gross shit out of his mouth <laughs> and his his like uh, his um, his sm- his smocks is that what you call it? the doctor's like uniform scrubs or whatever scrubs yeah they get ripped and you see the fucking swastika underneath <laughs> what the <laughs> hell is this he's still wearing a, a swastika anyway no so let's go just, let's get it Let's get into the characters. Explain who Lionel is and and Mum and Paquita. Who I all that well, all this time I thought her name was Chiquita. <laughs> Lionel is basically just like this beaten down, fucked up, nervous wreck of a man who's like crazy mom. Uh, uh, Vera, Vera, overbearing. Vera, uh, yeah. I forget. Vera um, Cosgrove. Yeah, uh, she's just like crazy, horrible bitch, and then. 
that Paquita woman is like, I forget how he meets her. Oh, he, her grandma's like a, her mom's like a psychic or something. Mm -hmm. And he meets her, I guess, going shopping or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So whatever. And you know, this guy's like never left his house or really like totally scared shitless of his controlling mom. He reminds and me of, of Wickus from District 9, didn't he? Or di or... Never seen District 9, but I think wow. he's the guy. You would love that movie, I think. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he's, you know, he's a lovable guy. He's just like fucked up. And then um, Paquita is like this nice Spanish girl that's like, whose mom, or I guess she's like a gypsy actually or whatever. Mm -hmm. And her mom is like. All like she's psychic. Spanish though, because she speaks Spanish in the movie. You know what? You're always correcting me. <laughs> to be correct is to be fully erect. So mm -hmm. anyway, this guy Lionel is, uh, I guess, the fates of uh, Paquita's mother, uh, grandmother, telling her that she's going to meet this hero um, to fall in love with for the uh, for the rest of time. Puts her into uh, overdrive mode to hump the shit out of Lionel. Mm -hmm. The only problem is. Uh, it's really cute. Like, the music's so cute and everything. This Watching you know? this movie, you would never guess this guy would do, <laughs> go on to do Lord of the Rings. Because there's something about it which looks cheap, but also awesome at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so not, it like, has, or it, anything. Yeah. It has one of those terrible, like, synth soundtracks. But, I mean, mm -hmm. it fits the movie because it's so <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> Every three seconds, there's That's a song. Cute. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, it's such like a lovely, warm feeling watching this movie. It and really then, is. I could watch it over and over. And, like, and just watching when I saw The Hobbit last night, which I liked, uh, Jackson is just like a master at the weird... He never has like one camera angle stay like regular. Like Every camera angle is either sweeping or Dutch angles and crazy angles and shit, which keeps it interesting you know, because it feels like... It almost feels like... Like, they're directing the movie with uh, a Sam Raimi camera. You know, from the Evil Dead. You know how that camera's just, like, going everywhere and shit like that? Yeah, yeah. It's great. So, I, I'm guessing both of them... You think Sam Raimi came before uh, Peter Jackson, right, I would assume? Uh, I, I think know, so. I think they're a little bit, you know, a little uh, on each other's backs. I mean, this is definitely uh, Peter Jackson's breakthrough, but he might have been making... I know he made this puppet weird Oh, yeah, he made Meet the Feebles and stuff like that. Yeah, like, that could have been before. I don't know. Could be. Well, please go on while I eat this sandwich. Okay, but anyway, so, you know, basically... The zoo uh, They go to the zoo, and for some reason in a zoo, in a normal zoo in New Zealand, they have a horrible demon monkey mm -hmm. that is there that, like... Oh, this is a sick scene where it, like, kills another animal, and then it bites the mom. Uh, or what should, oh, what should I say, actually? Basically, Lionel goes on a date with Paquita. Right. And, and he's not supposed to be doing this because the mom totally doesn't want him to be doing this. Like, she's crazy. And then the mom catches him there. So somehow she ends up getting bit by this fucking horrible rat monster. And then she, like, stomps on its head. And I remember that scene the first time I saw it, like, being like, oh, no. Because, <laughs> like, <laughs> eyes are pouring out and everything. It's, like, terrible, you know? It's so funny because the idea of the mother, she's so overbearing that she doesn't want any other woman in her son's life. Have you ever had to deal with that in your own life? Like... Oh, nothing like that for real. No, no. Well, I never had I, that overbearing. I but I, I, crazy controlling families, but not to like that level. It's so you funny because like I remember one time, <laughs> like when I first had like my first girlfriend over and stuff like that when I was younger, and and my mom was all like suspicious about it because that's the thing you know when your kids are like breaking away because they're they're humping somebody viciously in the other room. Mm -hmm. and you gotta act like you know they're like oh I don't want her here that much and stuff like that because they knew I was blowing my load horrendously over somebody's ass but you could understand like there's mother issues in this film this movie in a nutshell is like a, a son coming to terms with his overbearing mother while there's zombies <laughs> running around right and his mom's the most evil zombie of them all yeah his mother his mother eventually mutates into a super zombie. She turns oh, into a super rat Do monkey. all the zombies, would, if given the time, would they all mutate into that? I don't know. Maybe it's because she's the first human one that is doing it. Do you know what well, I mean? Well, it's just because enough time went by since she's the oldest of the zombies. Maybe that's the initial. That's the eventual metamorphosis. You know, it's like Frieza goes through different forms. <laughs> cell and what kind of threw me off is that... When she kills the nurse and she splits her head back, she didn't bite her, but the nurse still turned into a zombie. You think because she, put, she, her, she put her hands her. in her face? I, I, I think just because 
I don't know. It's a little abstract. <laughs> There's a lot of gross out shit in this movie, like just grotesque. Yeah, like not everybody that dies gets bit, but they all come back as zombies. One of know? the grossest things I've ever seen in film is that there's a uh, a couple that comes over to eat dinner at their house. Yeah. And this old man eats pudding, and she pops like a zit, or or her her, um, her ear falls into it. Yeah, just some of her you know, pus falls into, it and he eats death. it. Does he turn into a zombie? I don't remember. You know what? They never say, they never or show. maybe they do, and it's just a quick cameo of him. But, he, but... but he's actually still all right when she's at the funeral, so I guess he didn't, but it was just gross, man. It was one of the grossest things I ever saw in a movie. And he just yeah. eats it, and ugh, I, I love when she eats her own ear, though. <laughs> the mother is a good actor, the one, you know, playing... Oh, uh, yeah, she's great at being a horrible... I always wonder movies like that, where they have, like, a horrible bitch. How do they cast that? It's like, we want somebody who's really ugly and can be, like, the biggest bitch in the world, and, like, they'll get that person, like, that guy Cooper in, uh, in the Night of the Living... Yeah, Night of the Living Dead remake in the 90s or whatever. Yeah. Like, he's, like, the biggest asshole. How do they get him? They're like, we want somebody that looks like a fucking asshole that you could punch in the face <laughs> the whole time. That's what we want it's you to usually, do. It's probably usually the nicest person that plays a complete asshole in a movie. Right, right. Like, the it's second really the cameras are off, like, Cooper's, like, the friendliest guy, the mom's the friendliest person. Like, I, I bet, actually. It's, like, really crazy to me, though, how you can do that. I guess he's a good actor. Like, on this show, I'm such a lovable guy, but I'm a twat in real life. Danny knows that for it's sure. It's ten times worse in real Real life I'm than horrible, he and uh, <laughs> so I mean, what are the themes in this film that you picked up besides the whole mother angle thing? But uh, themes, like or feelings, feelings, like it, like it's totally got like a whole like Looney Tunes kind of vibe going on it. Mm -hmm. Like lots of just like silly, fucking retarded, over the top, cartoony violence, and oh, the whole priest thing. Uh, the, the whole, Lord. like, a kick-ass for the Lord. I remember the, whole, the first time I ever heard that. Like, that was awesome. I remember laughing my ass off when I first saw that part. This is a movie that, like, you, you you have to see it before you can ever say that you are a fan of horror movies, I feel like. You yeah, know? I think it's one of the ones that you have, like, if you're looking for... Seen, you know, you're still a fan of horror movies, but, like, you have to see this before you can say that you've seen, like, all the greatest movies. This like, is like a, yeah, Cherry Breakers. You know, Cherry Popper kind of uh, film, like... Yeah, yeah, this is totally that. Jerry Breaker? I don't know. But, um... It, uh, Alex in the ass. And I pulled my <laughs> so it's like, you know, the gore... When you're watching... When you're going to see the top gore house movies, you know, movies that deal with excessive gore and violence, I would put Dead Alive up there with Story of Ricky. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff where you're like, oh, I got... And if you're into that genre of film, just in horror in general, you got to see Dead Alive because it is a zombie film, but it's also, you know... It was it was the top for me for a while. I don't know what, what, what his yeah. man... Because they cut out a couple minutes worth of gore in the Dead Alive. Or, there's actually like about five different edited versions. Okay, but like, I saw Brain right? Dead. So yeah, Brain Dead. Like if if you can get you know the unedited version, there's a little bit more gore. But no matter what, you're getting a ton of gore. So it's great. It's a really good horror film. I mean, there's no question about how how good this is. There's uh, what do you want to talk about? The uncle, the shitty uncle that comes by. He's such a fucking douche. What's his name again? Wait, don't tell me. Let me try. I can't think. Whatever. He's Uncle such a Les. douche. What? Uncle Les. Okay. Yeah, he's such a fucking asshole. He's the mom's brother, actually. And he finds a way to um, kind of break into the inheritance that that um, Lionel gets once his mother passes on, because he wants to, you know, all the money because he was, the, I guess, the husband was rich. Because here's another thing: every time Lionel looks at water, he gets this like shocking, a uh, flashback of a woman's face drowning in the water, which we assume was the mom's. Yeah. Or and then like the fa uh, and a man's face on the water. We let later find out that the mother was a total twat and drowned the mother and father, which was a nice twist because I wasn't expecting it in the film. Just yeah. to show you how overbearing. Just like that whole spiritual like intestines part with that like star key, like the the right. necklace. Yeah. Yeah, like there's a lot of like kind of like abstract shit that like I wonder if Peter Jackson wanted it. To have more meaning, but like he couldn't fit it in the movie because of budget or something. I think I think he got it covered for what he did with like the cards and everything. It was just, it's a really interesting film, artistic wise. It's amazing, like just the practical effects and just like I had never seen somebody attack for anyone. CGI. This movie, right? Like, this this movie is fucking brilliant. And I'd never seen a, a film where a guy attacks you know zombies with a lawnmower because it's such a a melee weapon. And it's amazing. You're like, holy shit, that's so awesome. And just watching it originally, it's just grotesque. And uh, the violence is just so unbelievably 
epic, right? It's yeah, oh yeah. Like there's like I'd say there's like three scenes in this movie that like are just like classic fucking you you have to see these scenes even if you don't watch the rest of the movie the lawnmower scene alone is like the best thing I've ever seen and what are the other two scenes for you the karate uh, scene the, fucking, the whole priest fight and yeah, the whole part awesome. it's towards the lawnmower part but it's the part where Uncle Les is fucking chopping them all up with the scissors yeah yeah and he's just doing those weird <laughs> and like <laughs> then you get his hair off and shit oh like that scene oh god and then the light bulb in her mouth scene like that's amazing the part where the the woman has the baby emerge oh there's also that baby because there's a there's a part where uh the nurse who's that's an awesome effect where the nurse uh gets her head ripped but it's only hanging by the tendons in the back of the neck and yeah. every time her head flips back you look <sighs> like that stuff yeah, uh, and and she has sex with a dead priest, and it's like <laughs> they produce this baby that gets born. And I guess it's hyper. Uh, oh, like Lori's baby, and uh, yeah, right. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's like they have this baby, and then they leave. I mean, the, you could watch this and be like, "Why the fuck is Lionel dealing with all these zombies? Like, did he care about his mother that much?" Such a nice guy. He really is. I mean, like, he could have just sent the mother to the you know, the doctor's office and said, look at this shit. What is this? Like, how would it make him look bad Right. if he brings in this zombie woman? You know what Not I mean? Not really zombies in the typical sense, either. Also, what year did Night of the Living Dead? What time, what year did, was that filmed? Do you remember the original Night of the Living Dead? Was like, that, like, the it, 60s or? Yeah, it was the 60s. So I think there might have been a snafu with this because... Uh, when who was the name of the, the the punk zombie? Whatever the main punk zombie. Uh, oh yeah. He's taking a uh, leak on the mother's grave. Uh, he had a cool name, but I can't think of it. And she rips his dick off and then rips his like organs out. One that just has no legs and he's just scratching all the time and yeah, jumping. Yeah, before before he says that, he's like zombies, and I was like, wait a minute, but what year was Night of the Living Dead? Do you know what I mean? Right. Because like, well, would Night of the Living Dead be a template? Eight was the original. Of what? Of Night of the Living Dead is the original. Ah, so they were a year ahead. They fucked up Peter Jackson. Why? Because <laughs> this movie takes place in 1957. Dun, oh, dun, oh dun, I see what you're saying. You wouldn't have seen that. Well, zombies existed before Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, but not that type. Well, either way, whatever. How dare you? No. But, um, uh, what, what, are, what else in the storyline do you think worked then? Do you, was there anything in the storyline you think didn't work in the film? No, I can't think of a single bad thing about this movie. There's yeah, I mean, nothing. This movie is perfect. Even Peter Jackson's appearance in the film is funny. Cause it's so funny to look at him and you're like, wow, that's like the guy who's going to win Oscars and shit. And, you know. Every, every, there's not a single detail of this movie that upsets me at all. Yeah, I can't think of, I wouldn't change a thing. Seriously. It's probably <laughs> closest to the, the most perfect cult horror film that you want. It, it delivers everything. Like, it's just. All the, even when it's just regular characters talking, it's so over the top and the camera angles are wacky. Uh, right. That when it leads up to the gore and the violence, and, and it's just so good. It's like a, it's like a melee film. It's just insane. The, the levels of insanity that this film goes through. And I think his character sort of is almost like, you know, a, you know how on the online they'll say that he's a reluctant hero, kind of like Ash is. And he right. basically almost looks like Ash towards the end of the film because he's so covered in blood. I guess anybody can look like Ash. You know what I mean? When they're, like, chopping people He is kind of similar to Ash, but Ash is a little more kick-ass than he is. Right. And uh, I guess, you know, towards the end, he they have this whole awesome thing that, you know, when, even when I first saw it, I was like, oh, this is a whole thing about being rebirthed because, you know, he gets eaten by his mother and then he births himself out through her once again at the end. And right. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was just something... It's just really cool. I mean, not that it's so genius to do but it was fucking awesome you know what I mean there's just so much little things like and his relationship with uh Paquita and Paquita's like such a you know cute uh yeah, girl like, I would store. like totally hang out with Lionel and Paquita like I would love to like go over their house for dinner and shit like, and I think all- I think it's because it was such a since it takes place in the 50s that it feels a little bit more innocent than if it would in the, you know, if it was shot in the 2000s. Oh, or it was based around the 2000s, you know what I mean? Like, a little bit, people a little Yeah, they'd have, like, jaded. cell phones and shit and be, like, texting each other. And uh, it's also New Zealand in the 50s, so we can see what the New Zealand looked like in the 1950s. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was just rocks well, and, like, Flintstones houses and shit like that. <laughs> but, uh, but, I don't know, I mean, is there anything else you want to say about this movie? Like, how it changed your life for horror? Yeah, this movie is... I mean, I've always been in the horror since being a little kid, I guess, but I guess this was the first time, like, separate of my dad, watching movies with my dad, that I was, like, totally like, wow, I love horror movies, you know? 
It really is like amazing. Oh god. It's just yeah. Damage. Everybody has to see it. Everybody That's... had. I'm sure everybody who's listening to this has seen it already. Yeah. But we're reminding we you to we watch it again. It much. Huh? What? What did you say? <laughs> I said we're remind, reminding you to watch this movie again because there's so much that's so good with it. And there's nothing really we can say that'll make you be like, ah, oh, wow, how... Uh, yeah, no, there's no spoilers if you haven't seen it because it's like, you know, it's a fucking gore fest, you know. You know what's going to happen. Just watch it. It's amazing. Uh, so uh, with Danny, with, with Danny, with that, what's your ratings? My rating is definitely 10 out of 10 uh, <laughs> horrifying baby riding the carriage down the hill and like trying to attack people and hitting the uncle in the balls over and over <laughs> oh that reminds me when I was younger and I didn't know like the stuff that I didn't want to see in film I thought when the uncle was taking a piss and that, that very low angle camera shot they were actually going to show his dick in the movie and I was like no I didn't want to see that anyway, <laughs> or maybe I did so with that I'll give it a 10 out of 10 uh, rebirthing yourself by slashing your way out of your mom's uh, box Mm. So with that, our next film is... Uh... Next episode is Mossy Bank number two, American Horror Story, Asylum Recap. Is it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and with that, Danny, what's the final word? Skull Island. What's that you said? Skull Island. <laughs> Suck my butt and eat my shit.